Warning, this video is not for people with weak stomachs. Because I'm gonna try Filipino street food, but I'm not Cheers. only going to taste it, I'm gonna take it to the smartest microbiologist in the Philippines and put it under a microscope to see what's hiding inside. Oh, that looks disgusting! Including all the tiny little things you can't see with your naked eye. Oh, there's so many! I'll try the balut, I'll try the isao, I'll try the delicious quek quek, like quek quek, please, please, hey. and many more Filipino street foods. And you won't believe what I discovered underneath the microscope. Oh my god, it's moving! This video might make you sick to your stomach, or it might make you fall in love with Filipino street food even more. But before we test these street foods, I need to tell you a story. Seven years ago, I came to the Philippines to travel solo for the first time ever. Wow. Seven years ago, that makes me feel old already. Anyway, I traveled to Quiapo and I was amazed by how many street foods they had. I wanted to try them all and I did. Yeah. Then the next day, I woke up like this. Hey Tony, are you okay? And I can say my mom was definitely right when she warned me about Filipino street food. Hey Tony, I told you, huh? Don't eat that! You will get sick! Anyway, now that I'm older and definitely not any wiser, I'm gonna go back again to eat the famous Filipino street foods that made me sick all those years ago. And I'm gonna put them all under a microscope to see if this actually gave me food poisoning. What's up? I just arrived here in Manila and I am looking for the tastiest street foods. We drove one hour from my home in Manila to get here. It's called Litex Wet Market. And you can find every kind of street food that you can ever imagine. We've got quack quack. This is quack quack or deep fried quail eggs. And it's covered in orange batter and it only costs 5 pesos per piece. This one's yummy. So this is isao dipped in spicy vinegar. It's 5 pesos each and let's try it. Wow. Oh, that is spicy. Mm -hmm. And here we have veggie balls. And this one is new to me, so let's try it. And this is a fish ball and I'm gonna eat it. Oh, that's hot. They are 1 pesos each and we need to eat them hot, fresh Look. from the pan. 10 out of 10. And of course, the famous balut. It's only 25 pesos each and it's the most famous street food in the Philippines. Ooh. Look at this, the inside of a balut and the sauce is dripping down on my hands. Can I eat this part? Yeah. Yes, yes, ma'am. All of it? Yeah. Cheers. Mm. Delicious, delicious, delicious balut. The famous balut of the Philippines. It's actually really good, especially with salt. Highly recommend. But now, let's see if it's actually safe to eat. The food was delicious, but I wasn't here to taste test. I was here for laboratory tests. Next stop, to the laboratory! Teleport! After successfully teleporting, I found the most respected and trusted laboratory in the Philippines. The Philippine Institute of Pure and Applied Chemistry. Here, I met Dr. Crisanto Lopez, head of microbiology, and also the smartest human that I've ever met. Nice to meet you. Welcome. If anyone can tell me if this food is safe to eat or not, it's him. What's up, Tony? Let's see what's under the microscope. So these are all the foods that we're going to test to see if they're actually safe for you to eat. But wait, we also tested the street food for E. coli and salmonella. 18 more people have been infected with salmonella. Two people died. Experts are hunting for a mystery food item behind a huge outbreak of E. coli. Let's start with fish balls. There's nothing there. So it's clear. It's clear. So there's no point in looking at the microscope because you won't see anything. Yeah. Okay, then let's go to the next one. This is veggie balls. Let's check if it's safe. Let's check. So there's no um, gas. That mm -hmm. means that it's negative for E. coli. Okay. But for salmonella, we have this. Okay, that's salmonella for veggie balls. So let's look at it under the microscope. Well, based on the plates that we got, we had some colonies from the plates and then put them on the slide and you see the microorganisms here. Let me take a look. Wow, it's so pink. What are all those little tiny circles? Those are the microbial cells. What happens if you eat that? Well, you might get sick. So veggie balls, not safe to eat. On to the next one. I'm scared about this one because I like quack quack, but is it clean though? Please be safe. Please be safe. My quack quack, please. Based on this, for E. coli test, um, it's negative. Yes! Now let's see for no, salmonella. No, E. coli for quack quack. Okay, salmonella. It's also negative. Also salmonella. negative. Okay, give me that quack quack. <laughs> quack quack is clean. It's time for the chicken intestines. Yes, so I also see cells mm -hmm. under the microscope which came from the plate that we grew our salmonella samples on. Let me take a look. Hopefully I don't get traumatized for life. <laughs> oh, that looks disgusting! Oh, there's so many! And if you eat that, you're pretty much gonna get sick. Never gonna eat your sour again. Joke! <laughs> 
just make sure it's cooked clean. Now it's time for the most famous balut. Let's see under the microscope, doctor. So there's no gas, that means that there's no E. coli. But we'll see if it also is negative for salmonella. But unfortunately, for the preliminary testing, there's growth of microorganisms on the plate. Oh no. Which means that there's probably salmonella also. Is that common in balut? Because it's an egg. It's an egg. Um, you would expect that, but it depends on how well the balut is cleaned and cooked. Mm -hmm. But in the case of the samples that you sent to us, it's, it has microorganisms. Would you say balut is one of the riskier foods to eat? I would say so, because it has a lot of components and the handling mm -hmm. come into play as well. Okay. It's good to know that balut is somewhat risky and you need to find a good quality vendor. But how is it possible that balut is dirty if it's inside an eggshell? Even if you have the eggshell, sometimes the eggshell becomes compromised and you have tiny holes that could uh, be used by the microorganisms to enter. Okay, so balut. Let's not forget the famous food source, suka. Let's check it under the microscope. So no gas, so no E. coli for the suka. Let's see if it's also negative for someone else. So there's no growth. Clean. So it's clean. So it's safe. I'm actually surprised because a lot of vendors leave that sauce out for many days. How well, is it clean? Yes, because it depends on the components or the ingredients for your sauce. Since this is suka, so it has a high acidity, so low pH, which means that it can kill or prevent the growth of microorganisms. Wow, okay, good to know. Okay, Doc, so seven years ago, I went to Kiapo and I ate all of these street foods and I ended up getting so, so sick. So would you say that these foods are generally safe to eat? Based on the samples that you submitted to us, after our microbiological analysis, I would say that the veggie balls, the fried misao, and the balut are not safety. Okay, that's probably what got me sick all those years ago then. Now, after everything I've shown you, would you dare to ever eat your favorite street food again?